In this video segment, we'll discuss the surgical management of diverticulitis. Let's say you have a patient uh, with a recurrent history of severe left-sided diverticulitis and uh, you've obtained a CAT scan that demonstrates uh, that the sigmoid colon is involved and you've elected to take this patient to the operating room. Well, how do you decide on the distal resection margin and the proximal resection margin? Now, let's use this cartoon illustration to help us to define where to divide the bowel proximally and distally. Usually at the time of operation, what you'll find is a large area of inflammation involving the sigmoid colon. And then you have to decide where to divide and take the bowel proximally and distally. And generally speaking, you want to go to the rectosigmoid junction. This is an anatomically defined area where you will, def where you will identify a splaying of the tinea coli or splaying of the outer longitudinal muscles, which is what the tinea coli is. And also you'll find this an area to be devoid of epiploic appendages. And that's how you define the rectosigmoid junction. This is a larger caliber lumen, the rectum, uh, than is the sigmoid and it's generally more preferred. Many colorectal surgeons don't like to use the sigmoid colon for just about anything at all. Um, and it just essentially belongs in the bucket. Now, how do you decide where to take the, the colon proximally? Let's say you're in the operating room and you're examining the colon and you find that the descending colon uh, has several diverticula extending up to the splenic flexure. Do you need to take those, uh, that segment of colon because of the extensive diverticula? And the answer is no. You do not need to go proximally any more than there is involvement of the colon. So you go uh, proximally to the point where the colon appears soft, normal, and uninvolved with disease. So if it's not thickened, if it doesn't exhibit serositis, um, and, and the bowel looks healthy and normal, then you can uh, divide the colon proximally at that point, and then use the descending colon after mobilizing the splenic flexure uh, to create your anastomosis with the rectosigmoid uh, junction. 